I'm going to be attending a crafter's show this weekend at the VFW where I will be sewing some of my hero blankets. I need to make some business cards with my email address on it so if someone is interested in one of my blankets they can contact me. So I thought I would show you how I make business cards using Microsoft Word since some of you probably attend shows like this and might want some cards for the crafts that you do. So first I'm going to open Microsoft Word and open a blank page and I'll set the layout for a portrait. Now you need to buy some business card blanks and generally on the outside of the box it will have the number for the type of cards that you're using. So you can use that as uh, identification for your template. Go to mailings and labels, even though they're not actually labels. And here's where you can start setting up your business card layout. A business card layout is simply a table in Word. So I'm going to go to the options and here you can look up the vendor that you have. So if you have Avery labels or whatever and you can choose the vendor for the box of labels that you have and then when you choose them they'll have all kinds of numbers here with the type of labels. Most of these here are labels, mailing labels, but if you had business cards like here's a door hanger in cardstock and disc labels because that's where you can get the templates with this vendor. But I ordered mine from Papers Direct and there's no one here listed there for them. So what I need to do is to go in and break out my ruler and do some measuring. You have to measure your cards that you have and then set the numbering here for the dimensions. So it would be a custom setting. You can call it whatever you want business cards. And then set the dimensions. So I set the dimensions for the particular business cards that I have. And this is the layout of the table that will hold my card design. And I've saved this as Diane's new card. So now one of the graphics that I want on here is American flag. So I go to the internet and I type in American flag and I choose images and here I'll have a bunch of images and I can swipe a little piece of the best one using the Windows snippet tool. So you can go to start in your search and type snipping tool which I have already down here. So when I open it up it allows me to do screen captures so I click new and I can swipe a piece of a flag. Now this one's got a little wrinkle so it's not quite the one that I want so I'll stop and go find what I need. Actually after I went looking around I realized the flag with the ripple did look pretty cool so I swiped a piece of that and now I'll click copy and switch over to my document and I'm going to paste it into here. Now I want to have another picture over here. Let me zoom in so you can see this a little better. So I need to do some adjusting with this image. I want it over on this side a little more. So I grab a corner and hold down a shift to keep the proportions right and I make it smaller but it's still over here on the left margin because I need to set the wrapping. So I'm going to select the item and because I'm in a table, the table tools are still here, but now the picture tools come up. So I'm going to go into wrapping and choose 
if you have it in line, it's going to be fussing with the text. So, and if I put it behind, it's hard to capture it. So I'm going to put it in front and of the text, and then I'm going to have to do a little tricky maneuvering to get the text right. So when I do that, you'll see that it comes up with rotations, uh, markers, and anchors. But now I can grab it, and I can move it all the way up into this corner to use as much of the business card. And it's not quite there, as you can see here, on this right side. But I can use the arrow keys to tap it into place. So that looks good so far. I may have to make further adjustments, but that'll do for now. Now I have a picture of me presenting one of my flags to Sal Gunta, who is a, a um, Medal of Honor recipient who I had the honor of meeting. So I went and captured that picture, and now I'm going to click in this cell and hit Control V to paste in the picture of me with Sal. And this one, I need to also make sure that the wrapping is set in front of text so that I can manipulate it better. And I'm going to tap it over and up into this corner. But now it's kind of chewing up some of the flag here. So I'm going to hold down Shift and drag this a little bit more so I can make more room for my content. A little bit more. There we go. And of course, I'm going to hit Control S to save it because I've done a lot of work now and I don't want to lose it and have it messed up. Now I want to tell people what this picture is, so I'm going to insert a text box and I'm going to draw it out rather than using their options. So I pull it out here and it's got a line around it and it's got a big margin which doesn't leave much room so when it's selected I'm going to go to format and we choose no fill and I can't always find what I need on this silly ribbon I miss the menus but one of the best things to do when you can't find exactly what you need is to select the item and right click because chances are that's going to be uh, where the options are that you need to use at the moment so here's my settings for formatting so I do not want a color no color on the line that gets rid of the line but I also need to select the margins the size is okay drawing out text box margins I want it none and that gives me a much larger area to type in. And the font is currently 12, which is way too big. So I'm going to adjust it, but rather than playing around with this up here and trying to figure out what the right setting is, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcuts. Being a typist originally, I love the keyboard shortcuts because they don't always have to reach for the mouse, which is frustrating with the ribbon. But, um, but fortunately, with uh, all the keyboard shortcuts do still work with the ribbon. So I'm going to hold down Control and tap the left bracket, which will bring down the font size, which you can see because the paragraph marker is getting smaller, but also up here that's getting smaller. So I'm going to bring it down and then I'll start typing. Okay, so I typed in Diane with Medal of Honor recipient Salvador Quinta, but I still have a little room 
So I'm going to use control with the right bracket and see if I can bring it up. Nope. One more and it loses his last name. But I also notice there's room here that is not being used. So I'm going to check and see by clicking select it and right clicking and going back in to format and see what's going on here. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on, why there's a margin there. So what I'm going to do is check the settings for this text box, which you can do in any selected item or document by hitting Shift F1. F1 is help, and when you hold Shift, a panel opens to reveal the formatting. So now I can look, and part of my problem is I have one and a half line spacing, which is why there's so much space underneath. You can see the gray here. So I'm going to reset that. I can hit Control-1, and that'll automatically change it. Otherwise, I could go to the paragraph, and it would have been set to this and change it to single. And I also see the alignment is set to center now, so I can set it to right. And we'll see if now I can hold control in the right bracket. Nope, I'm missing it a little bit. So maybe if I fudge and pull this in, okay. So it's 5. I'm going to set it at 5.5. You can put in points, which is 5 and a half point font. It doesn't show you that you can do that when you go into the font because they're all solid numbers. But 20 years as a Microsoft Word MVP, trust me, you can put in different numbers. So I've got it at 5.5, and now I can bring this in a little bit more so that it's not in the way of further text. And I've used as much space as I can, and I'm going to bring that up. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. There's a squiggle under there because I have the spell checker on, and they don't know how to spell Sal's last name, but I know it's correct. So I'm going to hit Control S and save this. So now I need to start typing in some text. And you can see the cursor is flashing over here. Now I could set some indents or do some spacing to get over to this position here where I want to start typing text. But Word has another feature if you've got it set in the options, which it is a default, where you can click and type. So if I double click here, it's going to know I want to start typing here. And it will put in the needed spaces or tabs to get me to this position. But I'm also over too far and the font is too big. And because I have Shift F1 reveal formatting set up, I can see that the line spacing for the text here is also set at 1.5, which is good for internet documents, but not for printed documents. Now I can fuss around and figure out where it is, which it would be here under paragraph, but also I can just click on the hyperlinked heading, which is right here for spacing, and that takes me directly to the dialog box that handles these settings. So Shift F1 is a marvelous thing to know because it'll help you find things that you may not know are located on the ribbon. The same with selecting an item and right clicking. So I'm going to set this to single. I don't want it centered. I want it left. I hit OK. Now that jumped it way over there. So I need to click again. Brings it back to center. So I need to fuss around with this again. It's trying to center this. So what I'm going to do 
is take off the centering and I'm going to space which is not the best thing to do but in this case because I have the image here it'll work for me now I can also grab here and put an indent which is the more professional way to do it and then get rid of all these spaces then it will wrap right around here so those of you who like putting in spaces you'll see that this is a little better way to do it is to set an indent and you can also set the indent here so I'm going to change this to 2 see if that knocks it over a little more because it's hard to wiggle it with the mouse on the ruler and you can turn on the ruler under view to turn on your ruler I love having the ruler because there's so much information there that you can use now the other thing is the font I want to use this font and that is way too big so I'm gonna hit control left bracket bring it down we'll see how that fits okay so I just typed in some text and the reason you're seeing dots in between there is because I have the uh, markers displayed which oh there it is you can turn them on and off here with the paragraph marker the reason I said searched around for it is because I never use the actual icon if you hit control shift and the asterisk that will turn them on so you can see what's going on but I'm going to turn them off now for a moment this is a little too low so I'm going to squeeze this flag up come on just a tad and hit control s to save my work so far I'm going to hit delete oops I'm using control and arrows to jump letter to letter and I'm going to hit shift enter to put in which you can barely see on this screen there's a soft return it's an arrow going that way to the left so I'm going to turn off my markers and that doesn't look too bad I hold down control and I roll my mouse wheel to change the zoom you can also do that down here in the lower right hand corner and of course under view there's zoom settings but I use the shortcuts now I can spell this out and we'll see how that works I think there's a space here yep but that's lined up pretty tight you can hardly see the eye so I'm gonna go into the indent and change this to three and that squeezed it over just enough and that's pretty good and I hit control S to save this and you'll notice under here it doesn't like the term but the term is correct they a word thinks the grammar is off but it's not so I ignore it now I turned off the bold and typed some more text but you notice it's wrapping and it's not using all this space over here so there is a turn on my markers again you can see this is a paragraph marker which ends this so now I can change settings here and it won't affect this because this is considered a paragraph with its own formatting so when I'm in this paragraph I'm going to take away this indent but you'll notice it's jamming up with my text for the picture so here's a neat little trick that I learned a long time ago and works wonderfully I'm gonna hit enter now that kinda of left a lot of space but that's a new paragraph there and I can bring this up a little bit to save some more space so I hit control shift because that will select and allow me to jump and I hit the arrow to select 
that paragraph marker. I could have also just double clicked and got it, but I'm used to the shortcuts. And now I'm going to hit control in the left bracket because I'm going to make that paragraph marker a smaller font. You'll see up here it's changing and it's also getting tinier. What it means is it's taking up less space. So now it's a five point font. It's taking up less space and that brought up the subsequent paragraph. So there's room there. Now another way I could have done it was to select this paragraph and maybe make this paragraph a little larger to fill in. Too big. That's not bad. And then maybe if I got rid of this, no, I still, it's a little tight there. So I'm going to hit enter again, go up, select that, and I'm going to bring it all the way down to a one point. It's actually, there's something there, and it's giving me a little bit of space. The other way I could have done it was to select this paragraph, gone into paragraphs, and set a before marker at like point 0.1 or something. But that trick with the paragraph marker is faster for me. I've used it a lot, so I know it's there. But it can be tricky when you're looking at a document because you may not understand why things aren't formatting right. And that's because way down here, there is a hidden paragraph marker right there, and it's hiding. So you have to really know what you're doing, or leave yourself notes if you use that trick. Okay, so now I've typed a little more text. It looks crowded in here because I have the markers on, but when I turn them off, it's a little clearer. But I want this to be centered. So I can go into the alignment and change it here, but I also know another shortcut trick, which is if I hit Control E, that will center it. And it centered the second one too, because when I hit Control Shift 8, you can see barely that there is a little marker there. Things are pretty small because I'm using a Surface Book and they've set the resolution so high on this monitor that some things don't show up too well. So I hit control and roll down my mouse wheel to bring it back into a view. I can see if I hit a hard return here, it wouldn't affect this one line, but I wanted these two to be locked together. Now also, this can be shifted down. This time, this time I'll select this paragraph and I'll go into paragraphs and let's see if I can get it right. Five point, oops, I got rid of the P, P, T. That's not too bad. So I take off my markers and that doesn't look too bad. So I noticed I have a little space up here, so maybe I'll select this, hit Control X to cut it, click up here and hit Control V to paste it, and haha, -ha, it fits. In fact, I might even be able to make this one touch larger by hitting Control and the right bracket, bingo, it fits in. That jumped it up just one point in the font, which is just a lot faster using keyboard shortcuts for me. Now I can make this a little bigger, but you'll notice it's also knocking this right down to the line of where the business card is going to be cut. So I'm going to go into my uh, spacing. There we go. And let's change this to three. That brings it up just a little bit, makes a little less spacing above 
my email address, and I think that'll do it. I hit Control S to save it. Okay, so now I have this one done, but I also notice somewhere along the line I missed a cell here. So I put click my marker at the end, hit enter, gives me another set of cells. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lock in these two images. So I click on one, I hold shift, I click on the other, so I have both selected. I go to format and I'm going to set them as a group. So now these two are locked in as one item. Now I should have gotten rid of this stupid thing that keeps jumping up, which you can do under your options. But I've selected this cell and I'm going to hit control C to copy and I'm going to roll out select all these cells by holding down my mouse and dragging and hit control V to paste and now I have a whole row of the cards here I'm going to click up in the first one hold down my mouse select all those and control V to paste that in and I hit control S to save it all and there's my sheet of business cards so I check it to make sure everything looks good and I noticed hmm maybe this should have been a little bit further down oops nope that's not what I want control Z as in zebra will stop will undo whatever you just did which in my case was destroy and move those images while I'm trying to select this silly box it doesn't look too bad but let me see spacing before what if I put this at 0.5 does that help yes it does so I'll roll out and I'll select this one and I'll hit F4 which is the redo shortcut and that way I don't have to do this for every one manually it just repeats so I select them all hit F4 and it repeats my last action which somewhere on this silly ribbon is the repeat key but boy if you knew the shortcuts in previous versions they'll save you a lot of hunting time which is why I've always been an advocate for keyboarders some people said the mouse was e easier in older versions I hit control s to save it but boy knowing the shortcuts sure saves you in the long run because it, you they all just about everyone works in the ribbon version by the way, if you double click on the ribbon twice, you'll get rid of it. Come on. So that you can have a little more real estate if you need it. Double click it again, it brings it back. Oh, and on newer versions, you can do it this way. So now I'm going to send this to the printer. First, I have to run downstairs and put my business cards in the printer. And the shortcut for printing is control P. So that's it. Hopefully if you ever need to make your own business cards, you have the ability to use Microsoft Word to make your own and save yourself a few bucks from sending it to a vendor.